Amen. So a couple weeks ago, Debbie taught on idols. And so we're going to kind of go a little bit further into idols today. Um, but before I get into our scripture, which we're going to go to Ezekiel 8, um, I'm going to tell this joke, which will end up correlating with the scriptures here later on. So there's this little boy that comes in to his daddy's bedroom as he's getting ready for his day. And he says, Daddy, he says, I got something to tell you. And he says, Son, what's that? And he says, Well, you're probably going to hear, get a phone call or a letter or something from the school. And he says, Oh, son, what did you do now? And the little boy says, Well, Dad, and he says, I was standing in the lunch line. And I was waiting. I had my tray and everything. And at the end of the line, I saw big baskets of apples. And I thought, wow, those looked really good. And so I thought, I might get me some. But there was a card sitting there. It says, God's watching. Take one. So he says, well, okay. And then he said, then the, next to that basket of apples, there was a basket of cookies. And I thought, oh, those look even better than those apples did. And there was no sign on those cookies. So he told all the other kids, take all the cookies you want because God's just watching the apples. <laughs> so you guys will get the rest of the joke as we go further into our scripture tonight. Amen. All right, so we're going to read quite a bit of the scriptures, and then I want, I'm going to go back over it and kind of break it down here. And for some reason, my little thing went down to chapter 7. So in Ezekiel 8, in verse 1, it says, It came about in the sixth year, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah sitting before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell on me there. Then I looked, and behold, a likeness of a man with the appearance of fire from his loins downward. He was like fire, and from his loins upward he had the appearance of brightness, like gleaming metal, like bronze. He stretched out the form of a hand, and he took me by a lock of my hair, of my head, and the Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven. And brought me into the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the entrance of the north gate of the inner courtyard, where the seat of the idol image of jealousy, which provokes to jealousy, was located. And behold, the glory and the brilliance of God of Israel was there like the vision which I saw in the plain. Then he said to me, Son of man, now raise your eyes toward the north. So I looked towards the north, and behold, to the north of the altar gate was this idol image of jealousy at the entrance. Furthermore, he said to me, Son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great repulsive acts which the house of Israel is committing here to drive me far away from my sanctuary. But, will you, but you will again see greater repulsive acts. Then he brought me to the entrance of the courtyard, and when I looked, behold, a hole was in the wall. He said to me, Son of man, now dig into the wall. And when I had dug into the wall, behold, there was an entrance. And he said to me, Go in and see the wicked repulsive acts that they are committing here. So I entered, and I looked, and saw every kind of creepy things and beasts and lonesome things and all the idols of the house of Israel carved all around on the wall. Standing before these images were 70 elders of the house of Israel and among them stood Jezaniah the son of Saffron, each man with his censer in his hand and a thick and fragrant cloud of incense was rising. Then he said to me, Son of man, do you see what the elders of the house of Israel is doing in the dark? Each man in his secret room of carved images. For they say, the Lord does not see us. The Lord has abandoned the land. He also said to me, yet again, 
you will see even greater repulsive acts which they are committing. Then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the Lord's house, and behold, women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. He said to me, Do you see this son of man? Yet you will see still greater repulsive acts than these. They are all committing. So he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the entrance to the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the bronze altar, were about twenty-five men with their backs to the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they were bowing down toward the east and worshiping the sun. He said to me, Do you see this, son of man? Is this too slight of a thing for the house of Judah to commit the repulsive acts which they have committed here, that they have filled the land with violence and repeatedly provoked me to anger? And behold, they are putting the branch to their nose. Therefore, I indeed will deal in wrath. My eye will have no pity, nor will I spare them, and they will cry loudly in my ears, yet I will not listen. So I know that was a lot to say, but I want to wanted to kind of read the whole thing to just give you guys the whole contents of the of chapter 8. So in Ezekiel in this chapter, you know, we're talking about idols and stuff. And a couple of things that really stood out to me was I like the numbers and that type of stuff. So if we take a look at the 6th year and the 6th month and the 5th day, So six, meaning weakness of men. If the men weren't so weak, this would never have happened. So I I find it interesting that they used the number six there. Um, and, And then also because of it being double, they have two sixes. So then it's 12, which is meaning, um, like the apostles, the elect purpose of God, tribes, judges, government. And then grace for uh, the number five. And then if you add up all those numbers, the two sixes and the five equals 17, which is victory perfection. And the reason why I bring that up is because they could have had victory. They could have had perfection. But they chose not to because of their idols that they were worshiping. They had the elders that came in Ezekiel. They came to Ezekiel's house. And so when the elders came, we have to imagine that they're coming to the prophet's house to sit and probably hoping to get a word, to hear something from the prophet. And so as he's gone through that, and if you notice... uh, you know, there was a hand that came down and lifted him by the lock of his head. When you break down and when you look at the the your hair, it means maturity. And so the way that the Lord will show me is that he knew that he could take Ezekiel by the head of the hair. He could have taken him by his arm. He could have taken him by his hand. He didn't even have to mention that he took him by any part of his body, but he chose to say that he took him by the head of his hair, but that's because that there's maturity there. And God knew that Ezekiel was mature enough to be able to be lifted up in the spirit realm to be taken to Jerusalem so he could show him what was going on. And, you know, there's times in our life where when we don't know, we don't know. And we have that grace. But then we mature. And there's things that I know, especially here with Spirit of Life and with all of us, that over the last several years, God's had us really digging in our own selves and looking at our inner parts and dealing with our past things, which has been really good. But I know for me, and I can only speak for me, that, you know, God's been showing me dig a little bit deeper. And so when he's talking about going in and he's bringing them into um, 
to the wall and there's a door and to go through that door. Sometimes we need to go through a couple, you know, doors to get to where we need to get to. And in that place, there was all the creepy crawly things. So I would say, what's in your life this creepy crawly? It may not be exactly, you know, what is described here in the scripture, but we all have things in our own life that we can take a deeper look at. We all have things that maybe God wants us to kind of deal with and to clean up, to be able to go into the next level, to go into a, a greater maturity, to go into um, a deeper place even with him. Because when we have the, these idols or these things that we haven't dealt with, that means we're d we still have things from our past. And when we're, we haven't dealt with those things from our past, then it's harder to be able to go further into the future. And sometimes when we haven't dealt with those things, then we're ministering out of our things from the past. So it's important that we deal with those. And sometimes we deal with more of the, surf, the superficial things. But here in Ezekiel, it's dig a little deeper, go a little bit further, get in there. You know, and when you think about having to dig, you're having to do something. You're having to go through some motion. You're having to maybe even use some instruments or something to build a dig. And so, and sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's, it gets dirty. Sometimes we don't want to look at those things in our life, but I believe God is calling the body of Christ to go deeper, to dig a little bit further, to take a look at some of the things. And I mean, I know for myself, there's things when I first started looking at Ezekiel, this was actually an assignment. Um, and when I, I read it and I was like, that's great, God, I'm good. <laughs> God's like, really? I'm like, yeah, I don't have any idols. He's like, really? He says, let's talk about this. And I'm not exaggerating one bit when I say this. Almost every single day for the last month or so, God has had me dealing with Ezekiel 8. I'm like, there's that much? There's that much in here that I still need to deal with? And God's like, oh, yeah, there's that much, and I'm sure probably even more. Yeah, I thought I was doing pretty good. But when we really get down to the nitty-gritty and when we really start digging, that's when God can start moving around in those layers. And, you know, a lot of times we hear the analogy of peeling back the onion, and you peel back one part of the onion and then there's another layer and you deal with that and you're like okay I'm good to go and then God says no there's still yet another layer and truth be known for the rest of our lives we'll probably always be peeling back a layer or so as we go through our life because new things come up we go through new situations we have to deal with different things and stuff and so we're always having to deal with something in our life and God's wanting his body to get it together. He's wanting us to come to a higher mature, maturity. He's wanting us to get to a place that doesn't separate us from him and us. And sometimes we wonder, you know, God, where are you? How come I haven't heard from you? Or, you know, things have been kind of quiet here lately or whatever. God's never quiet. He's always there. He's waiting on us. And so, I would ask you, what is in your life that's separating you from God? Or what's keeping you from not hearing God as well as what maybe you should, um, you should be able to, you know, hear from him. And so as I was kind of going through all this, and I'm just going to, you know, be me <laughs> and be real and share, because that's, that's the only way that I can testify to things and to be able to relate this because so many times when we look at the scriptures you know I'm looking at the idols and we can break down the different words and everything but I just want to be able to share some things that God shared about me so when I first dealt with was looking at Ezekiel and I thought about idols and I thought Lord I dealt with the only idol I had in my life, which was 30, probably 30-something 30 years ago. And that's when 
and I'm bringing this up also for a reason because we have grandkids and we have other people in our family and there may be somebody that's watching this either now or at a later time when they're going to be able to relate to what I'm going to share with you. So this is kind of embarrassing, but hey, why not? Um, so about 30 something years ago, you know, it's actually when Garth Brooks, it was about in 1990, Garth Brooks came out and he was very, very popular. And I had just had my second child got to go meet Garth Brooks, me and my sister. We were head over heels, just goo goo gaga, ridiculously in love with Garth Brooks and just thought he was the great, the great, greatest thing. And so we went and saw him a couple times in concert and he got so big, so fast that um, you had to literally go stand in line to get a wristband to be able to qualify to go stand in line to just go buy tickets. And so when I'm talking about standing in line, you guys, I'm not talking about just a short little line. I'm talking about like hours that we stood in line to go see, to be able to get a wristband, to be able to go see him. And so we did all that, and it came down to where we were going to get to go buy the tickets. And God still started dealing with me about idols and about me and how I was reacting to Garth Brooks and stuff. And I mean, I had every album. I watched everything that ever came out on TV. I mean, I would go up to the TV and kiss the TV. I mean, I'm talking, I'm saying it's embarrassing, but it, it was bad. Okay. I mean, it was bad. And so God started dealing with me. And this was before I knew anything about the prophetic, about actually, you know, God talking to you about stuff. And so when God started showing this to me and he was telling me about how I was reacting and how I was putting this man up on this pedestal and he was an idol to me. And I was like, what? You know, I knew some of the word and what he talked about idols and the, the word says, I will have no other idols before me. And so at that time, I didn't have a cell phone. So I had to walk because my, my car was broke down or something. So I had to walk down the road to go to a pay phone, which, yes, they had pay phones back then, <laughs> and to make the phone call to my sister to tell her, I cannot go to that concert with you. And she was like, what? You're crazy. What do you mean? So I tried to explain this to her. And, of course, she didn't get it. She didn't understand it. I was being stupid. I was being crazy, blah, 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 blah. And, I mean, she was upset with me because this was Garth Brooks by the way and he was the one that was coming to town and so God dealt with me back then and so when he was showing me this I was like Lord I dealt with all that I'm good and he's like really I was like yeah really and he says mm -hmm. he says so what's the first thing you look at when you get up in the morning and what's the last thing you look at before you lay your head down uh my phone he says mm-hmm he says your phone can be an idol you know we've we have gotten so much in in our lives of technology and phones and I know you know we have assignments we have work that we have to do on our phones and so I'm not talking about just that but so many times I hear people say I don't have time to be quiet before the Lord. I don't have time to, you know, study. Or I don't have time for this. Or I don't. Well, how many times do we take the time to look on our phone to see how much phone time we're actually having? I mean, I just got a new. I'm a new iPhone user, and Android didn't do this. I know of, but on the iPhone is pretty readily available that shows you how much screen time you have. And you start looking at that, and you're like. Oh, and they they even go a little bit step further, and they break that down for you, and they'll tell you how much social media time, how much this, how much that. And when you start looking at it, you don't realize how much time you've really spent on the phone. And I know for myself, I mean, my intentions start off good. I might looking be looking at scripture or studying something, but then something catches my my eye or a thought comes to me, and I start looking, and I'll get on Facebook, and those little reels are on there. You know, the enemy, he, he doesn't just show up like, hello, here I am, I'm the enemy, and I'm trying to distract you. 
No, he comes in so subtle and he does this in all different ways. I'm just using the phone because that's like one of the easiest things to use as a demonstration. You know, he comes in and before you know it, you've watched 50 different reels that take, you know, so many seconds, which you don't think, you know, okay, well, it's a few seconds here, a few seconds there. Yeah, but when you watch them one right after another, that eats up a lot of your time. And that time can be spent with our Father. That time can be spent listening to Him. You know, so many times is we hear people say, well, I pray, but I haven't heard anything. Okay, well, did you pray, and did you sit, and did you wait to hear? It's not a one-way conversation. It's a two-way conversation. But if you don't take the time because you're too busy, something else catches your eye, then even our phones can become an idol. And God doesn't like that. God's not happy with that. And so, I mean, and I, I know he knows that we have to use our phone for, you know, business. I mean, you can run your whole household and everything else off your phone. So, I'm not saying that they're bad, but I'm just saying that in some situations or some circumstances, they can become an idol if we're not careful. And so, what other idols may be there in, in our lives? And, you know, each individual has to assess their own life. Each person knows. I mean, I can sit and watch my husband all day long and say something to him about it, but what about me? So I know for me, I've tried to make it a habit. I've only missed a couple of days, but <laughs> I've really tried to make it a habit that the first thing that I pick up every single morning is my Bible. If I read one chapter, one verse, a couple of verses, which it always ends up to be a whole lot more, and I'm like, oh, no, now I got to hurry up and get ready. But that is the first thing that I pick up every single morning. That's the last thing I lay down every single night. And I do it purposely because I want my eyes, before I lay my head down, the last thing that's on my mind, I want to be of the Lord. The last thing I want to see is the words of my Father that he's given to us or to me to, you know, live by. And so... Those are just little things, and we can all kind of take a look and take an evaluation of us. But God's wanting us to dig a little bit deeper. And if we're off of our phones or we're off of distractions, then we have that time to dig a little bit deeper. And, you know, I think sometimes we occupy our time with so many things and I know, and everybody here will say amen, that I say yes way too many times, and that gets me in trouble. You know, you think you're doing a good thing, wanting to be a help to everybody and to have your hands in everything, but we can't always say yes to everything, because then that leads to other issues and stuff, and so even taking it away from even idols there's other things that we can learn from ezekiel 8 and so a couple of the other things that the lord showed me was self-control discipline and patience and for me and i'm just going to kind of use i guess again just me just to kind of get your minds going to see what it is that the lord might want to show you you know patience i've been told my whole life that i've had the patience of job and so I've taken that, I've ran with it. Well, I find, I found this, I've gotten older because I've kept myself so busy that I don't have as great as patience as what I once had. Or because I'm taking care of, like I take care of my mama. And, you know, sometimes when I'm wanting to hurry up and get somewhere, or I'm wanting to do this or do that, sometimes I might not be as patient as what I should be. You know, and so patience is something because, and it's, it's not that it's a bad thing, but it's, again, going deeper. Again, it's taking you to a higher level. Because even when I was talking with God, I was like, God, I have patience. He's like, that's true, you do. He said, but I want you to have even greater patience. Because of areas that he's wanting to take me into, it's going to require even more patience. Whether it's waiting on him 
whether it's waiting on something else to be able to occur and I need this done right now, let's get this done. No, Lord, you need to have patience. So he's taking me into a greater awareness to have even greater patience. Um, discipline. And you say, okay, well, discipline, you know, and again, everybody in here knows how I am with health and, you know, I'm going into having a wellness center and everything. But if I can't even discipline myself, how can I expect anybody else? How can I help anybody else with discipline? And so, you know, again, that's another one I thought, okay, well, I do pretty good with that. And he's like, really, Lord? This is, you know, you try so hard to lose weight, and yet it's, well, I'll do that tomorrow. Well, taking a little bite of this. Well, that won't hurt, so I'll just do a little bit of that. I'll get to that on Monday. You know, we're having this thing on this week in time, and so I'll start this on Monday. He's like, no, we have to be disciplined. Whether it's in what we eat, whether it's in um, exercise. For me, exercise plays a big part on how my body feels. And lately, I haven't felt like it. Well, sometimes we don't feel like picking up our word either. Sometimes we don't feel like waiting on the Lord. Sometimes we don't feel like praying. It's discipline. So in all different areas of our life, we have to have discipline. Um, Self-control, that kind of goes along with all of that too. So I'm, for me, even though I do have some self-control and even though I have some discipline and I have patience, he's saying, I need you to go even further. I need you to go even greater. I need you to dig even further inside of you to be able to bring this stuff out even greater. And so, um, you know, Ezekiel, like, there's a lot in here. There's a lot that you can go in here and, and, and break down. But I just wanted to kind of bring out a couple of the you know, things as far as the numbers, because we do have the victory. We can walk in victory. And even with these, with the elders and stuff, as we were um, talking about the elders being there with Ezekiel, they had a choice and they chose to worship the idols. They chose, they went into the inner part and they were hiding it. We can't hide anything from God. We're not fooling. I mean, we might be fooling people out here. And I might be thinking, well, Debbie doesn't know I'm over here doing this. Well, my husband doesn't know I'm over there doing that. Well, he's in bed. I can eat this or I can do this or, or whatever. But God knows. And that's the one that's the most important is God knows. We are not fooling God. And when we say that we don't have anything to go into that wall, to dig in even deeper, to go through those doors, we're only fooling ourselves because God knows. And so I would encourage you to seek the Lord, to seek, you know, Holy Spirit and ask him, what door do I need to go through? What, how, what do I need to dig out? What do I need to do? to be able to go inside of me, to be able to have a deeper relationship with the Father so that way you can be exactly what God's called each and every one of us to be so we can fill our destiny and so we can go out and do what we're called to do for the kingdom of God. Amen.